with us on a journey into the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable. We will test your senses and challenge your beliefs. A world where science and religion clash. Or do they? You will meet real people and hear real stories, but you will not believe. You will witness strange sights and hear strange sounds, but you will not believe. This is the New England Ghost Project. Welcome to the Nightmare. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my parlor. I'm here at the uh, Salem Witchboard Museum. Did I say that right? Yes. Oh, good. That's surprising for me. I know. It's amazing. And, and uh, of course, I am Ron Kolick, your host, the gatekeeper of the realm of the unknown, the unexplained, and the unbelievable. And I can't stop looking around. This place is freaking awesome. It's amazing. Oh, it, it is. It's like, <laughs> I want it all. And with me, of course, is my charming co-host, the most, I don't know, I can't even think of it anymore, the blonde bombshell, I'm just looking at everything, I'm lost. <laughs> it's been so long, it's been so long, but look, we're back, we're back in person, right. person to person, we're all vaccinated, we got all our shots, so, you they know. They don't let me out of the home much. <laughs> they let Ron out of the home, and here we are in Salem, and this place is really exciting. We have a very fun show for you tonight. Oh, yeah. So we're not only excited to be back in action again, but to be in such a wicked cool spot. Exactly. It's awesome. And uh, we got a few surprises for you tonight, too. So, so but first, a cemetery tripping. It's been so long, I couldn't wait to do another cemetery tripping. So we're going to drop this little one on you right now, and we will be back with a very special guest. Welcome to Cemetery Tripping, where I will feature a different cemetery in each episode that I hope you will seek out and enjoy as much as I do. As an avid taphophile, or lover of tombstones, I spend a lot of time in the local New England area in the beautiful and historic cemeteries we have here. The stones here are like no others, and I have literally thousands of pictures of the intricate and symbolic carvings found on them. You can see my pictures on Facebook by doing a search for Cemetery Tripping. Welcome back to Cemetery Tripping. It has been far too long since we last spoke. Today we are paying a visit to Green Mount Cemetery in Baltimore, Maryland in special honor of Elijah Bond, the man who patented the world's first commercially sold talking board, also known by its trademark name of Ouija. Before we delve into Elijah Bond's grave, I just wanted to provide some information about this historic rural cemetery. Greenmount Cemetery was one of the earliest rural or garden cemeteries in the United States. Samuel Walker, a Baltimore tobacco merchant, led the campaign to establish the cemetery after visiting Mount Auburn Cemetery in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1834. The site was originally the country estate of the late merchant Robert Oliver, known as Greenmount. Mr. Oliver spared no expense during his lifetime in beautifying his estate, and at the time of his death it was a picturesque and highly ornamented locale. The proprietors of Green Mount Cemetery purchased about 60 acres from the heirs of Robert Oliver, and Green Mount Cemetery was officially dedicated on July 13, 1839. It is the final resting place of more than 65,000 individuals, including statesmen, captains of industry, philanthropists, artists, authors, military leaders, and even a presidential assassin. Yes. That would be the grave of John Wilkes Booth, the man who assassinated Abraham Lincoln, along with his co-conspirators Samuel Arnold and Michael O'Laughlin. It is common for visitors to the cemetery to leave pennies on the graves of the three men. The one-cent coin features the likeness of the president they successfully sought to murder. But now let's return to the focus of today's visit, Elijah Bond. He is perhaps best known for patenting the Ouija board, although he was also an inventor, lawyer, tax collector, and an insurance agent in the course of his life, as well as a member of the Masons. He received the patent for the talking board in 1891, but then sold it to the Kennard Novelty Company, who began manufacturing them. 
Elijah suffered a stroke of paralysis in 1919 and died on April 14, 1921. He was laid to rest in Greenmount Cemetery, but for some reason in an unmarked grave. Almost a century later, enter Robert Murch, a paranormal enthusiast, Ouija board collector, and chairman of the board for the Talking Board Historical Society. He had been searching for Elijah's grave for 15 years and finally located it in 2007. Robert wanted to make sure that Elijah Bond finally got the acclaim for his invention and set to work assembling volunteers and getting donations to create a truly memorable headstone, which of course is a replica of a Ouija board. The grave is now a popular destination for paranormal enthusiasts and after years of resting in obscurity, Elijah Bond is finally being communicated with one way or another. So I hope you enjoyed that cemetery tripping. I know I learned a lot about Elijah Bond when I was doing the research for that cemetery tripping. But now... You know he's dead. No kidding. Okay. That would be why he's in the cemetery, right? Probably. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just didn't, you know... Are you going to introduce our guest? Oh, so joining us now is uh, someone who we've had a pleasure to meet finally. Uh, I've spoken to him a few times. and. Uh, we actually know several people. I know people that he knows people. Ah, oh, the same people. Your people know their people. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, he is the uh, proprietor of the Salem Witch Board Museum, and he is John Kozik. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh, you're so welcome, John. It's awesome that we could you could invite us up here and see this place and. Oh, I'm happy to show it off and have people that in, have an interest in this stuff. So. Oh, love it. John, this is this is awesome. I really is like you know when I opened it up, I was just I couldn't train my eyes because I was yeah. like, oh, look at that. I like that one. I like that. One. I mean, uh, the globe one up there is awesome. The Atlantic message map. That know. one's got a great story behind it too. They well, all have good stories. We'll but that one to, has a really good. We'll story. have to talk about that then because we're gonna go look at a, some some of the boards here. Not, you couldn't possibly look at it. Be like a seven year old seven year old <laughs> show. I mean, there's so much to see here. Well, and, uh, I, and when are, you, when are you open here at the museum? We're open seven days a week. Really? So, yeah, okay. 11. Right now, we just changed into basically summer mode. So 11 to 8 p.m., seven days a week. And, and where is it? Uh, right on Essex Street, 127 Essex Street, right across from the Hawthorne Hotel. The Hawthorne Hotel. Yeah. So, yeah, just keep going all the way down to, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's awesome. So, I mean, I'm looking at these, and I'm just amazed at the ones you have. I mean, there are some in here I had no clue even existed. And there are, there are others that I, I know that you can't get anywhere, and, and yet they're here. And when did you, I mean, how, first of all, how did you get involved? <laughs> well, I, uh, I inherited my grandmother's board. And uh, basically when I went online to learn more about it, I stumbled upon a website called the Museum of Talking Boards. And it, was, it just had a huge resource for, for talking boards, Ouija boards. And I just couldn't believe uh, that there was this many, you know, different versions of the boards, that and all the history behind it, and uh, so once I once I saw that website, I, I said, oh, I need another one, and one became another, became another, and I quickly became obsessed by a Ouija board. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I totally get that. I only have a few, but I'm always looking for them. Exactly. It's it, you know, I've always collected something my whole life since I was a little kid, and. Uh, but collecting boards, it, I nerd out, and like I told you a little while ago, I, I collect all the variations of these boards, as many, whatever I can find. And, uh, you know, I'm part of a group now. At the time, I was just, I, I was by myself. And then I met my first collector, and it was like, this is weird. Somebody else is into this kind of thing, too. <laughs> and then eventually I met a few collectors. I, I joined a collector's group, and that, that group became the Talking Board Historical Society. Which is a registered nonprofit. We research, preserve, and celebrate the history really? of those boards. Yeah, and so our friend Robert Merch is the president of that uh, nonprofit. And so, but through there, you know, just kept getting, becoming more and more obsessed by it. And so, in this museum, uh, these boards become extremely rare, you know, because, uh, you know, they peak in popularity during times of war. So when the war is over, less boards are produced. But two, Ouija is like the big kid on the block. You know, they're the big brand name, 
And so a lot of these you know, a lot of these boards they can't compete against that popularity. And then the boards that say Ouija on them are probably infringing on that trademark. So when you come in here, there's boards that are if I say it's the only known one, that's all we've seen in not just my fifteen years of collecting, but other collectors who've over thirty years, it's all we've seen. 30 years. I, I agree with you. Like I said, I, I, I've seen boats here. I have, have no idea it even existed. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have, so these, so there's Ouija boards and there's witch, witch boards. Yeah. Spirit boards. Spirit boards. Yeah. So, so can you explain the difference? Because I know I I'm can. sure there's a lot of people watching that just don't know the difference. I can. So Ouija is a trademarked brand name. Mm -hmm. Much like Kleenex is the tissues. Ouija is to talking boards, spirit boards, witch boards. Those are all generic titles uh, for a talking board, an alphabet board. Ah, okay. But witch board, I chose witch board for a few reasons. One is... Uh, You're in Salem. I'm in Salem, <laughs> so you got, you got witch in the title. Oh, it's a great eight, uh, 1986 movie with Tawny Katane. Uh, oh, oh. Like yeah, she rolls around on the white snake car. <laughs> yeah. She's in that movie, and that inspires a, a me and a lot of people to became interested in Ouija through that movie. Uh, but before Ouija existed, uh, the person that first started mass producing a board, he didn't have a title for it, and he was calling them witch boards. So there's a few reasons why I chose which board is to, as and as opposed to just being the talking board museum or spirit board museum. Mm -hmm. Which board museum just fit being in Salem and those other factors as well. So. That's the one thing I, I could never figure out is, is they made that movie uh, Witch Board. Yeah. And uh, they, like I said, I got the big poster to it, but they never made a a board for it. You'd think Hasbro or somebody would have. You would think, especially now with like yeah. Stranger Things yeah. and you know the, the uh, making boards. Oh yeah, they have you know you can get any, yeah. anyone oh, and everyone. Yeah. Put, uh, what's that one with the two brothers? They go around looking for weird stuff all the time. Go fighting ghosts. Uh, super no supernatural. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Supernatural yeah. boards. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Buffy the Vampire boards. Sure. Yeah. 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 You name it, they've got oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, Surprised they don't have a Downton Abbey board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, they didn't do That's too much cool. merchandising for it. Mm -hmm. um, that movie originally was called Ouija, and then at the last minute they didn't have permission or they didn't want to deal with mm -hmm. the legal part of using that name, and so they went with Witchboard, and uh, they've spawned two more movies since then. So, wow. But yeah, they never got into merchandising really on it. Mm -hmm. they did. I, I have a replica of that board oh, uh, nice. that I bought off of Estee. Nice. And uh, I, I like it. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not original or anything, but it is that board. Yeah. And uh, for Spirit Quest, one year, Spirit Quest is a, a big event that we run every year. And uh, I had that blown up, so we have a large, giant oh, nice. one. And I cut out a giant wooden planchette, yeah. and we actually did that uh, witch board uh, with the giant planchette with a bunch Very of people cool. on it. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But, yeah. So why do, you, why do you think people are so scared of Ouija boards? I think it all starts... Of, I, I suspect it's because... These are easily accessible to kids. They're sold in toy stores, and so a lot of times it's somebody's first experience with the paranormal. Mm -hmm. Now these boards, they work based on what you believe, not what I believe. They work based on what you believe. So if you are not taking it seriously, if you're asking questions that maybe you don't want the answers to, those are the kind of results you're going to get from using the board. And if that happens at a young age, uh, not only maybe like Maybe a sleepover where there's like a dare the aspect women, to oh it. Oh my god, yeah. The you little know, girls and yeah, yeah, parents that say you shouldn't do these things, so now you're you know, you're gonna do it. Uh -huh. So I think a lot of times because it's someone's first experience with the paranormal, uh, those whatever experience they had stays with them a very long time. Right. So And and that's funny because we just did a show on this the other night, a radio show. And that is exactly what happened was a, a friend of mine gave me a story about her and her girlfriend when they were 13 and the parents didn't want them playing with the board and they waited till the parents weren't home and snuck the board out of the closet. So, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly what happens. I mean, in, in myself, I get people send me Ouija boards that are mm -hmm. haunted by yeah. demons and so forth <laughs> that, that are out there. So far, nothing bad. Yeah, I mean, happened. there's there's that well, part I lost of it. My hair. <laughs> I blame the Ouija board. Uh -huh. But I mean, there's, there's people that have had the bad experiences, but then there's just a lot of uh, superstitions that people have heard over time, you know, and a lot of that comes from like the movie The Exorcist, where in the early 70s, 
That's how they explain how she becomes possessed, is she'd use the Ouija board. And even though it's a very small scene in the film that a lot of people might not even remember, over time what happens is people say that story, oh, and then yeah. it just becomes part of what people believe. And so to this day, I'll meet a lot of people that come in the museum, and they'll say, uh, well, I heard you should never use the board alone. Yeah. And I'll laugh and say, well, actually, you know, since these peak in popularity during times of war, a lot of times it was a woman who used the board alone probably to speak to a deceased husband, father, or brother. Mm -hmm. And it was very normal. And that movie changed a lot of how people use the board. And so, uh, but that's a superstition that we can trace pretty close to the exorcist. Yeah, so I, I think really the, the exorcist and, and Hollywood in general. Of course, yeah, there's all the horror much, movies is, you yeah. know, sunk yeah. everybody. Yeah. So are all the boards that are here, did you collect personally mm -hmm. or... Wow. Or everything, well, everything here is from my collection except three boards. Three boards, like what Ron was saying, how he gets people that donate boards, uh, they were donated to the Talking Board Historical Society mm -hmm. because the previous owners had bad experiences with them or thought they were haunted. And so those are here, and I, the TBHS gets quite a few donations. But the three boards that I put on display here, I think, tell the best stories. They're not the scariest stories. But they're just a snapshot of some of the beliefs that people have about these boards. Uh, so we walk around a little bit. I can show you them when we get to them. Yes. But yeah, so everything here is from my collection except for those three boards. That's amazing. That's excellent, actually. And so do you have the entire collection? What's that? Do you have the entire collection? Oh, no. No one will ever own every board. Every other it just, it's, it won't happen. It's too, but that, who wants that to happen? Then I mean, then I stop looking. And that's, stop collecting. You know. Well, no, you end the, You don't want to end the chase. If right? you knew how much time a day I spent uh. looking and on the weekends and how far I drove, I just drove down to uh, Amish area of Pennsylvania last week to buy two boards. So six hours to go pick up two boards. Really? Yeah. I, you know, this oh, is, I love it. Yeah, good boards. I'm, yeah. I'm at the flea markets. I'm at the yard sales. I'm oh, everywhere. Wow. I do this stuff and. Uh, I love hunting. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. And yeah, so awesome. if I had every board, I don't know what I would do. Right. <laughs> I don't right. know what you the can. next thing would be. Yeah. And Your life is over. Yeah. <laughs> and there's still, I mean, people go on eBay and because that's the number one thing. Sure, of course. Right. And, and, you know, the prices on there are the prices on there. Oh, yeah. But you can still get bargains on oh, it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. She, I mean, Ann collected, she got the Ouija board, the Swami tray. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 It's and beautiful. It's huge. Yeah. It, yeah, it's big one. Yeah. yeah. Explain how that happened. I, I was just in an antique shop. I was, we were camping uh, down in Middleborough, and um, I'd just gone out for the morning, poking around, gone to a cemetery. Nice. And, oh, look, there's an antique shop across the street. I'm going to pop in there. And it was October, the beginning of October, and one of the, it was you know the one with different booths. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this booth was all set up for Halloween, and spider webs and everything. And there, in the middle of the table, is this beautiful. It's perfect uh, tray, yeah. like this Ouija board tray or Swami board. Is that what yeah, it is? Mis it's mystic. 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 Yeah, that's that's mystic. Mystic. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh my thing. God, I have to, I just like grabbed it yeah. in case somebody else saw it. I was so excited. Awesome. And I paid like $20 for it, $25. It right. was on, even on sale. Yeah, that's on the amazing. sale of the booth. And the guy rang me up and he's like, this is probably worth a lot more money than what you're paying for it. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, or is it? Yeah. And I love it. I have it uh, on a that's shelf in my part. art studio. Yeah, I mean, to me, hunting these down and the stories that come with them, whether it's going on an adventure with your friend or a friend maybe giving the lead to where you did it, what you would do to, to acquire these things, to me that's just as important as the item. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, maybe even a little bit more important. Than yeah. that. So before I came on here, I asked you, you know, I, I have a collection too, nothing like this, but uh, I asked you where you could get the information on, on, on the different boards. And what, what source did you talk about? So the, the, the biggest resource online is uh, the Museum of Talking Boards. That's run by Gene Orlando, who used to be a member of the Talking Board Historical Society. And he was really one of the first websites uh, to have any information about talking boards. But the TBHS, who also researched and preserved that history, you know, I have insight to 
what Merch has uncovered, our friend Robert Merch, the president of the TVHS. Uh, so, but as far as going online, it would probably be the Museum of Talking Boards would be the best, best resource. There's no books at all, huh? No, but you know what's funny is... It should be one. People always talk about that, but I've been for doing this for 15 years, and I have literally watched the history unravel. You know, if you go to an encyclopedia and you look up where did the Ouija board come from, for instance, it would say William Fold, inventor and manufacturer. Well, I was part uh, of a group who uncovered that that's not true, that the board names itself. Helen Peters, who's the sister-in-law to Elijah Bond, the person's grave you were talking about earlier, uh, she actually asked the board what it wanted to be called and spelled back Ouija. So we uncovered that history. We, we rediscovered it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so any book you do, it's going to be outdated, uh, I, I believe. We're going to find more information than we already have. You ever never. You come up with a new one, second edition. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. But anyway, so what we'd like to do is uh, take a look at some of these boards and maybe sure. tell us a little bit about them. Of course, I'd love that. All right, so. Awesome. Great. Okay. okay. So, John, what's with the caution tape on these boards? <laughs> so, I was talking a little earlier about donated boards that went to the TBHS. Well, the Stranger Things board here on the wall and these two with the caution tape on them were all donated. Mm -hmm. uh, ones with the caution tape on them, uh, the previous owner of these boards found them in their house. They're not sure how they got in their house, but when they found them in the house, the husband lost his job and the kids, they started suffering from nightmares. So, the wife she put the caution tape on them to protect anybody from using them. So they actually came with the caution tape. They came on. I didn't put that on there. Oh, yep, I thought it was like a good gimmick. Yep, so they donated them. And when I followed up with her, uh, the husband, you know, after I received the board, the husband had a new job and the kids stopped having nightmares. So she believed just having these boards in her house, not using them, just having them in her house caused those problems and the problems went away. So do you still have a job? <laughs> I have my job. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, nothing here now. I don't all know. These, all these things were in my house before the museum, mm -hmm. and, and nothing bad has ever happened. Yeah. So. And, and we were talking a little bit earlier. Is that I think this is a great way to display our, display your connection oh, yeah. collection. I mean, granted, it might not be the perfect way for you, that you wanted yeah. it, but it's such a great way to see all these different types of boards, yeah. and for other people to experience as well. Exactly, and that's really what I love best, is being able to share these things with other people. They're not just in my house for my own, you know, from just me to see. And uh, being able to talk about these things, hear people's stories, that's the biggest reward for me having a museum, is definitely being able to meet people that, again, like when I first got into it, I didn't think there was anybody else into this stuff. So to meet people that are actually into it, uh, and do have questions or want to learn more about it, that's the best part. So you talked earlier about, oh, you and I talked earlier about people putting their names on it, like Supernatural, oh, yeah. Buffy the Blam. So this is Stranger Things. Yeah. So what's the story behind this one? I love this story. So this, uh, this too was donated to the TBHS, and uh, I keep it in the museum for a few reasons. One is people that watch that show, they might not realize that it was a talking board, that even though there wasn't a planchette going, the alphabet was being lit up by the, the bulbs above, and she was speaking to her son on the other side. The other is when you talk about haunted items, people perceive that those have to be old and not something from 2017. But the previous owner of this board had a bad enough experience with it, so much so they spent $15 to $20 to mail it away. They didn't put a return address on the package. <laughs> they put a note in with the board, and the note basically says, if you find it, forward it to the Talking Board Historical Society because trust me, you don't want it. Oh. And I'm okay that I don't know the whole story. I know it was bad, and they're worried about it coming back to them. And that's that's so many stories exactly. attached to these things. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be to me. It doesn't have to be a story of you know they had uh, contact with something and then the lights went out or all these different things happened. There's a lot of experiences people have, and you know the ones that we have here. I love this because it talks about the superstition of people worried about the boards coming back to them. You know, you hear that superstition of, what do I do with this board? I need to get rid of it. Do I light it on fire? Do I throw it away? And then you hear the stories of, no, it oh, comes back to them. That. You don't do that. Yeah. Exactly. So there's a lot, you know, when you go online, there's a lot of misinformation or it's just a lot of superstitions that people just don't know what to do. And they feel better about donating them to thinking that it's going into uh, someone that would uh, be more careful with it. You know? when, when I get bored sometimes, they, they have omelets with, uh, omelets, <laughs> amulets with them. Uh, for instance, there was Bible one time in yeah. one of them, and you know, other yeah. ones will have sage on them or something like that. Yeah. So they're all unique stories, and 
Uh, but for some reason, for the, those particular people, it's bad. Yep. So you can have them. I mean, for, for me, you know, I don't believe, I believe this is a tool to having a conversation. It's not the entity or whatever you believe you're speaking with. It's just a tool to have it. And, you know, I don't burn, break, or throw away my phone when I have a bad conversation on it. But people I do that to my stuff. wife. But, that's <laughs> but anyway. Uh, all right. So uh, speaking about wife, we were talking about uh, something we did on a show earlier, the last show, about some guy that murdered his wife, shot him four times. And well, you've got a unique... Yep, so in, yeah, in the museum, there's stories of murder and suicide, the mystery around the board. And one of those stories is the Heard case. And uh, where that gentleman was, uh, his wife was using the board, became obsessed with it. And uh, the board told her that her, not only her 77 year old husband was cheating on her, but he had, uh, he had hidden $15,000. <laughs> and so she believed the board, so much so she tied him up on the bed and she tortured him for years. Years where she would like take a hot poker and burn his feet. She'd take the butt of the gun and, and hit him over the head. And eventually, one day he broke free and he killed her with the gun. And uh, shot her four times in the back. Yeah, exactly. And the police, they, of course, they came to investigate and they found him innocent. You know, he wasn't charged. And you have that photograph. In I do. We're there's looking a, at that now. So, yeah, there's yeah. a photograph in the museum that yeah. comes from the Associated yeah. Press. Yeah, we're looking at it now. So yeah. it's pretty cool. That's amazing you have that. And uh, one other board I want to talk about, and I know Ann has questions too, is that round one we talked oh, about earlier. The round one is great. Yes. So that combines a few of my favorite things. Uh, one is, uh, it's a very rare board you don't find online or anything. And uh, so when it came up, I actually flew to California to buy all the ones that this guy had. But the story is that uh, it belonged to Geraldine Saunders. It came from the estate of Geraldine Saunders. She was the first female cruise ship director. She wrote a book called The Love Boats, which became the TV show, The Love Boat. Oh, wow. She had a very fascinating life. She was a model. She was, uh, engaged, or she was married to Henry Omar, who was an astrologist of the stars. And even though they were only married for a few months, she actually kept writing the column for years. She was engaged to Albert Decker, who was a B-movie actor, who was in um, Hercules versus the Cyclops. <laughs> She found Sorry. him hanging dead in the shower, yeah. bound and gagged, uh, with hypodermic needles in his arms, all this, uh, uh, all this uh, derogatory stuff written in red lipstick all over his body, and the police ruled it a suicide. <laughs> so when she, when, uh, when she died, uh, I met the person that bought all of her occult and astrology books, and he found 13 of those round boards. Really? And so... Uh, the one that's hanging in the museum is actually one that, so these boards are very rare, not distributed. It was sold on the Love Boat or Pacific Princess, whatever cruise liner she worked for. So it's the display model where it says, oh, for more, you know, check with the clerk for availability and stuff. Wow, that is yeah. so cool. So I love it because I literally hopped in a plane and flew out to California and I bought 12 wow, of the 13 boards. a serious board. collector, my friend. Yeah, 12 of the 13 boards. All right, so I know Ann has some questions, but yeah. one thing I, I have a, a unique uh, little Ouija board thing, and it's a, a deck of cards, but it comes with a little Ouija board and a metal planchette. Oh, really? Yeah, it, and uh, uh, I really like it, and it, the planchette is, is uh, made of uh, metal, a very well quality, and it's another thing I'll have to show you. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I'm your host, Nathan Mayer, and in this segment, we will be discussing a brief history of the Ouija, the company who mass-produced it, and Ouijazilla. A Ouija, also known as a spirit or talking board, is a flat board with the letters of the alphabet, the numbers 0 through 9, the words yes, no, occasionally hello and goodbye, and along with various symbols and graphics. It uses a planchette a small heart-shaped piece of wood or plastic as a movable indicator to spell out messages during a seance purportedly used to communicate with the spirits of the deceased. 
one of the first mentions of the automatic writing method used in the Ouija board is, was found in China around 1100 AD in historical documents of the Song Dynasty. The method was known as Fuji, planchette writing. The use of planchette writing as an ostensible means of necromancy and under special rituals and supervisions was a central practice in the Qin Cheng school until it was forbidden by the Sing dynasty. As part of the spiritualist movement, mediums began to employ various means for communication with the dead. Following the American Civil War in the United States, mediums did significant business in allegedly allowing survivors to contact lost relatives. The Ouija itself was created and named in Baltimore, Maryland in 1890, but the use of talking boards was common by 1886 in spiritualist camps. Elijah Bond filed for patent protections for his idea to sell a planchette with a board with the alphabet printed on it, and the patent was issued on February 10, 1891. William Fold, an employee of Elijah Bond, took over the talking board production, and in 1901, Fold started production of his own boards under the name Ouija. Kennard Novelty Company, where Fold was a bonisher, manufactured his boards. George S. Parker founded his game company, initially called George S. Parker Company, in his hometown of Salem, Massachusetts, in 1883. In 1887, George Parker had hired his first employee and rented a store in Salem for $12.50 a month, where the Hawthorne Hotel now stands. He realized he was good at selling and developing games. When George's brother Charles, who was good at production and finance, joined the business in 1888, the company's name was changed to its more familiar form. In 1898, a third brother, Edward H. Parker, joined the company. For many years, George designed most of the games himself and wrote all the rules. Charles persuaded George to manufacture Parker Brothers games under their own roof. They leased an old laundry on Bridge Street in Salem and went to work. The company would go on to sell Ouija. After a series of mergers, the Bridge Street Salem plant closed in 1991. Ouija Zilla was revealed to the world on the Salem Common, which is adjacent to the Hawthorne Hotel, on Saturday, October 12, 2019. The board is the creation of Rick Omorta Shrek, Vice President of the Talking Board Historical Society, a nonprofit dedicated to researching, preserving, and celebrating the history of the talking board. Ouija Zilla was constructed of 99 individual sheets of plywood, which was transported from Shrek's home state of New Jersey to Salem by tractor trailer. The board weighed a whopping 9,000 pounds and was large enough to park five full-size 18-wheelers on it. The 15 and a half feet long planchette was roughly 400 pounds. According to Ripley's Believe It or Not, Ouija Zilla holds the unofficial title for world's largest Ouija board at 3,168 square feet, which took Shrek a year to create. Okay, so I had talked to you earlier about the planchette I found. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I talked to you about the, the Swami board. Yes. But I also found a planchette nice. in a different antique store. And I noticed in your case right here, uh, the mysterious planchette. Yeah. And it's, this is very old. I have the original cardboard box, too, Whoa. that it came with. So it yeah. is pretty cool. You have to send me a picture of that. I, I will. Oh. I absolutely will. And it's got little wooden feet. Yeah. Um, and it's in kind of rough shape, but it's still, you know, I think it would still be functional. But. Oh, yeah. So what about the the, the, the story of, of the planchettes? I mean, there's all different kinds. Some have little windows. Yeah. And, um, what what about the, the, the actual planchette? Well, I, first of all, I think I'll, I'll start back a little earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, the planchette 
is a device that was used in France as early as 1851, mm -hmm. and it was just like an automatic writing planchette, which had a pencil at the very front of it, and had wheels on the back, where a medium would channel a spirit through themselves, and they would write or draw onto a piece of paper. Ah. And it's not until that device basically crosses paths with an alphabet board is where we get the talking board from. Prior to that, people had been using shot glasses as mm -hmm. planchettes or boulder hats with four pencils kind of hovering over the letters. But the automatic writing planchette is really how this is modeled after. They oh, take away okay. the wheels, they take away the pencil, mm -hmm. and that's where you have that heart-shaped uh, design. Mm -hmm. um, but early on, it's more of a paddle. Eventually, it kind of changes. But really, when you start getting into all these in the case, same with the boards on the wall, what you have is manufacturers who are just trying to set themselves apart, and they're just trying to one up the next person. Gotcha. So that's where you start getting the Swamis, uh, mm -hmm. Egyptian, Middle Eastern themes on the boards. And that helps confuse a lot of people with the history as to how old these things are. Because now people think, oh no, they were used, you know, back in, in <laughs> Egypt. In Egyptian or, times? Exactly, but it's not. It's really, it's an American thing that mm -hmm. starts the mid-1800s and really just peaks in popularity during times of war. And by World War II, it's extremely popular. Mm -hmm. And so that's where really where the planchettes start changing from just being uh, heart shaped, then having the hole in the center of it, mm -hmm. and which makes it confusing as to where you're supposed to look to get the messages, the point or the hole. Right. Especially if the hole might have a pin in it, have glass and pins, mm -hmm. it's hard to see through it. Mm -hmm. So it's not until trial and error as to what messages you're getting or you can make sense of where you're supposed to be looking. Ah, you know, but okay. I like the ones from the 40s, there's one specifically mm -hmm. that say, look through the hole. Uh -huh. And that helps, you know, okay, now I know where I'm supposed to be looking. Oh, I'm going to have to go home and look at mine more closely. I yeah. think there's a little pin in it. Yeah, which makes it kind of hard sure. to look through. Yeah. All right. Well, my when I get home, I'm going to take a picture. Oh, I'll please. definitely send it to you. Uh -huh. so, I, so I also have my, my Swami tray. Mm -hmm. And I, I have, it came with the paper instructions. Nice. Which I have, like, in a little bag. And... And it looks like it's probably from the 50s. Is that 1940s. accurate? 1940s. 40s. Yeah. Oh. So cool. it would be it would fit well on this wall behind us, mm -hmm. where this whole wall is uh, World War II that's happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, in America, you know, there's probably about 50 boards on this wall, kind of just letting you know just how popular it is during that time, and uh, not and how competitive mm -hmm. it really was. Not only against these manufacturers, but they're mm -hmm. still competing against Ouija, which is the biggest. Right. Manufacturer of all of them. Wow. Yeah, but that tray that you have is great because um, the company that made that, Hasco, they came they came up with the technology how to press that tray, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a license to put out Disney products to do trays uh, for them, but they didn't. We don't. I don't believe they had a license to actually use the Disney witch on that tray. Yes, so the bottom, there's a witch on it. Yeah. The bottom, mm -hmm. It's out of place. It's all Middle Eastern yes. people on camels. Yeah, yeah. And then you get to the witch and you're like, wait, that doesn't fit. Yeah. And it's the, it's the, the witch from Snow White. So, oh, my God. So I'm not saying they, that it's illegal. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they had permission to use it on the Ah, region. I see. Because they made dinner. Everything else was dinner trays, That's serving cool. trays, things like that. It just seems like an odd thing to put oh, on a tray. Odd. Exactly. I'm like, why would a Ouija board be on a tray? Yeah. I've never ever seen anything like it. That's why I'm yeah. so excited to find it. So, oh, it's a great cool. score. Very cool. Yay! <laughs> so, there's some other. We, um, there's a, a board in here of the sex. The, what the, is it? The Psychic Sex Board. The psychic Sex Board. That was made in Watertown in the <laughs> 70s. And, you know, in the 70s, you have key parties, you have, you know, swinging parties. And really, as people's views on sex change, their interaction with the Ouija board changes. Uh -huh. You know, right after World War I, uh, the board kind of gets a second life. Mm -hmm. And the directions on the back will say it's best played between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. It's best played with the board on your lap, so now your knees are touching. Mm -hmm. You're in a dim lit room, you're unchaperoned. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple pictures here where you'll see just how, most famously the Norman Rockwell drawing from the Saturday Evening Post in 1920, mm -hmm. where you see the couple touching. And then that picture is great because the woman is clearly engaged in this session and the man is just focused on, on her chest. <laughs> yeah. But you get an idea, it's pretty risque for the time. Yes. And you know, as people's views on sex change, that, that changed. So by the 70s, now you have key parties, swinging parties. Next to the psychic, psychic sex board here is a book called uh, Swap Around the Ouija Board. Uh, and even by the, the 60s, you know, Parker Brothers, who wants to sell as many boards as possible, mm -hmm. 
they're not going to tell you you're speaking to a ghost or a spirit. They're going to just want to, it's mystery. What's going on? It's strange. But one of their ads that we have hanging here, it's a man and woman playing, and at the very end of it, it says, you may even get a little turned on. Oh. So, <laughs> we'll hook you up. Yeah. <laughs> That's a riot. Oh, my God. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And we're going to be right back with another right. segment. Okay, joining me now is a good friend of mine. Uh, she's a psychic medium, author of the book, Medium Rare, Leslie Madden. Hi. She was, you've been out here on my expertise on the uh, sale, you know, on the expertise. You know, <laughs> Your escapades? Yeah. Okay. So, you heard John talking about these boys about being haunted. And, and so, what, what do you think? Can they be haunted? Well, it depends on what energy has been put on them or if it retains the energy. As you know, in psychometry, um, items do retain energy, so it's very possible that they could retain some energy. Yeah. Okay. Do I think they're haunted? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they're haunted or not. So, I'll t tell you what to do. Why don't you just put two fingers on that one with the uh, Christmas bulbs on it there and see if, if you get anything besides sore fingers. <laughs> it does have some energy to it. It does. Put your put your fingers on it. Yeah, it so does have some. All over this well, now. I'm not used to my fingerprints. I'm using my left side of my hand. There is some energy on oh, it. Little zip there. Yeah. Yeah. So if we get in a car accident on the way home, <laughs> we can sue John. Is that what you're I'm saying? I'm not driving, so it's okay for me. Um, yeah. So. I don't know the history of that, but there is energy on that board. So would you have that, that in your house? I would have that in my house, yes. You wouldn't have a problem. No. All right. All right. Thanks, Liz. Sure. So I noticed you have the little pink Ouija board here. And yeah. uh, before I get in, i got to tell you a story. For 13 years here in Salem, I used to be part of the Festival of Dead, and I did Spectral Evans at the Hawthorne Hotel. Yeah. And every year since that first year, I used to uh, poll the audience I say, who thinks the, EV, the uh, Ouija board is evil? And when I first started doing it, it was like 90% of the audience, they had their hands up. And as the years would go, would go by, it would drop and drop. Yeah. But after, they were always the same. I would, who would think those Ouija boards are evil? The hands would go up, then I'd go behind the screen, and I'd come out with a little pink case on me, and I'd say, how can you think that this is evil? <laughs> so what's the story behind that? I, like I always call it the body, it's not. Exactly, no, no, it's not a party, but you would think that, for yeah. sure. It's uh, definitely, so, it's 2008, put up by Hasbro, pink Ouija board with a pink carrying case, pink planchette, mm -hmm. and comes with those little suggestion cards. Which is great. Their cards are awesome, because right. they're just what you would expect uh, for a company to be having eight-year-olds ask the Ouija board. Exactly. You know, will I be famous someday? Does somebody have a crush on me? Um, well, I marry a famous actor, yeah, you know, yeah. I have a couple on display for it. But yeah, oh, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. what I love is in 2009, a few Christian groups got upset. They called for a boycott, a Toys R Us, <sighs> but the only problem was the board was already sold out. That's how popular it was. Yeah. You can still run into it once in a while now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a fun board. Um, you know... The, the questions are, are really, really funny. And yeah. They, they really are. And, and then you can see it as little girls, or, well, I say little girls, but young girls yeah. uh, doing this. And, and it's no more than their slumber parties. And, and that's, you know, that's the way it is. But Ouija is such a, a big deal in our culture. I mean, it sneaks into, like, movies and stuff oh, yeah. that we don't even notice. Yeah. Downton Abbey now. I, my wife and I are big at Downton Abbey for it. And they had the Ouija board sure. in there one time. Oh yeah, it's it, one of the best lines I ever saw. Was, is that they were doing the Ouija board in, in the kitchen, and the cook uh, was there, and she was telling, oh, "Okay, break it up." And the, the other young girl says, "What's the matter? Don't you believe in spirits?" And the, the cook says, "Yeah, I do, but I don't think they play games." Yeah. <laughs> which, which is basically what the Ouija board was originally designed as—a yeah. game. It was always meant to be that way. Oh, it was always meant to be spirit communication. Right, but. Nothing evil. Nothing evil. Even though, even from the beginning, there was always like a little pieces of stories, you know, whether it's the murders or like the towns going crazy or whatever. There's always like a darker side to the board, but the general consensus wasn't that it was evil. So what is the creep over? I just happened to see that. <laughs> Another Christian, uh, a Christian book put out. Uh, 
about the Ouija board. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Ouija board. Yeah, it's almost like, a, you know, a, a, a bigger version of like a chick track or something, you know? Wow. <laughs> okay, so I, I have one more that I'm, I'm confused in. It. And I, right. I know the Kresge boy knew what the oh, yeah. pen woman yep. is. Yeah, yeah. What is this with this uh, mannequin thing? Yeah, so that's the Magi board. It's one of only two boards that we know of that uses more of like a, a marionette style planchette. So instead of a heart shaped planchette, it's literally two sticks that are crossed. And uh, on the box, you'll see how the people are using it. But there are four people sitting across from each other holding one end of that stick. And at the very center of the two where the sticks meet, there's a little point. And so that would be the pointer to go across. Oh, okay. But what I love about it, I keep it specifically, it's in the museum right there because um, one of the stories I talk about is uh, when Murch, he actually got to meet Hubert Fold, who was the president of Ouija in the 1930s. And he met him on hospice care on his deathbed. And uh, Hubert, he got an interview from him, and Hubert basically talks about how uh, they shouldn't have messed with the success of the Ouija board. They tried to make this metal board that failed. And uh, eventually they got scrapped for the war. And he talks about how they should, the Ouija board was so popular, they had three factories in Baltimore all producing it at the same time. And they shouldn't have messed with the success of a Ouija. And so there's a reason when people think of a Ouija board, they picture one image in their head. And they don't realize there's thousands of different styles and motifs. And uh, it's because the Ouija is the biggest and most popular of them all. And that's, you know, you don't, when you think of a talking board, you're not thinking of these two sticks that are crossed no. going by it. Yeah, I have one, uh, which of course I can never remember the name of it. But what they did is they just took a whole pile of things and put them together. And it's a giant eyeball. Oh, oh I love that one, Kabbalah board. Kabbalah board, yeah. yes. And it's up the end. And it not only has that, but it has the tarot cards around the end. In the uh, the heart, what do you call those signs? The astral signs. Yeah, it's got all the astrology on it. It's like heart tipping table, Fire. magic eight ball, yep. tarot card, Ouija board, all in one. And the best part about it is the box. Yeah. <laughs> but it, 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 they they just take a product and they just keep doing yeah. it. Now this is a, a game out now. I I, I did a uh, I did a works online workshop on different forms of uh, communication. Uh, Dowsing, or uh, what's another word for it, but whatever. Anyways, and there's a game out now called Charlie Charlie. Mm -hmm. And I actually had one people, one people, one person leave the class once I brought that up. Oh, and, wow. And it's just basically two cross pencils. Yeah. Another form of a Ouija board, though, right? They, In a it way. Gets, it gets, it's a pendulum, you know, yeah. acts with the, but a lot of people, what I love is a few years back, uh, there was these school kids in Mexico who were using the using playing Charlie Charlie, and uh, there's video of it. And the kids become possessed. They are they have to get strapped into these gurneys. They're foaming at the mouth. They're speaking in tongues, and it's like Blair Witch. The you know, camera's shaky and going around, but it's real. These kids really believe. It's it's like one became uh, had a bad experience, and then next thing you know, the whole classroom. It was just mass hysteria. Yeah. And uh, the videos are amazing of it. But they're playing Charlie Charlie. But what happens is the newspapers say they're using the Ouija board. And you so know, it's, it's very board. easy to demonize the Ouija board. It's well known to be demonized. And so rather than trying to explain exactly what Charlie Charlie is, which it is a fortune telling or yeah. uh, divination, but it's slightly different. It doesn't have the alphabet. It says just the yes, no. Mm -hmm. And it's more of a pendulum, pendulum type thing. Acting right. over it. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, they're, they're all different ones like that. I mean, the, the pendulum now, I mean, they have the pendulum boards which have letters on it. And yep. you, you do that as well. Exactly. So. Yep. Yeah. I love behind you, there's uh, color forms from the 70s. Oh, they gosh. made the, the, the finger of fate. And uh, it's like a little clear plastic ball with mm -hmm. a pendulum hanging in it. And the alphabet's at the bottom. And normally you, you hold the pendulum over a board. This, you're actually holding the board from the magic of the pendulum kind of. Uh, Pretty unique, and uh, I call it a talking board because it's got the alphabet on it. I know, that's the interesting thing is, is where you draw the line on yes. it. I mean, uh, there's another one that has the, the finger in it. Uh, it's the, I, it's, it has a planchette like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget what that one's called. You, you better recall the name. Uh, well, there's the, um, the Michi Man 2. That was the first one to have like a finger point to it. Then we were talking about the ESP board. That's what it is, the ESP that board. Has, yeah, that that's that's the, exactly what yeah. The ESP board is the one that has a... 45 record. Exactly. It comes with a record, so you're supposed to play it, so set cool. the ambiance, uh, where it's like just basically um, 
just like the sounds of the ocean or anything yeah. else. Which is what they use now in meditation. Yeah. Exactly. Like that. yeah. All right, that's cool. And now a few words about the woman who named the Ouija board, Helen Peters Nosworthy. Good morning and welcome, everybody. We really appreciate you sh sharing your time with us this morning and honoring the mother of Ouija, Ms. Helen Peters Nosworthy. We are in the middle of creating history again. We're taking something that was old from the past, bringing it into the future, and immortalizing it for the, for the way into the future. This is going to be here forever. And we're going to always honor Helen Peters Nosworthy. So, so I'm, my name is Karen Dahlman. And I am a director of the Talking Board Historical Society, and today you're going to be meeting a lot of us directors. We're all here, with the exception of Bob. And I also want to thank Bob, because it wasn't for Bob's uh, foresight, I would say, that foresight, and his uncovering, and the rest of these directors here, uncovering the history and connecting the dots, we would not be standing here today. I also want to give a big thank you to the family. They're over here behind a tree. <laughs> and we've got the great, great grandson and great, great granddaughter. So Lauren and, and William are here. Their mother, mother is uh, Kay Fettler and her husband Doug. And this is the family members, and this is part of their plot here. So again, thank you all very much. I'm going to hand this off now to Jim Cavato, as he is with us for the Fairmount Cemetery. So come on up. You're welcome. We're just excited um, to find out that Helen is, we obviously knew she was here, but we didn't know anything about her. And so when I moved to Merch a couple of months ago, we started opening up our eyes to all the stuff going on. So, and again, thank you, Karen, and we're just excited that you guys are here and that we now have this awesome marker. And thank you, family, for letting them do this. And now I'd like to introduce to you one of the other directors of the Talking Board Historical Society, Jean Orlando. Come on up. <coughs> Ow! <laughs> so this is uh, from the city and county of Denver, office of the mayor, and I'd like to read it to you. Greetings. Today you are celebrating the life of Mrs. Helen Peters Nosworthy, who is buried in the Fairmont Cemetery here in Denver. Mrs. Peters Nosworthy is considered the mother of the Ouija board because of the role she played in naming the now iconic game and for securing the patent on the invention. She convinced the official at the patent office to issue the patent after an astounding demonstration that spooked everyone present. She was born in Baltimore, Maryland, and in her later life moved to Denver to live out the remainder of her days with her beloved husband, Ernst, and her adopted daughter, Mary. We join the Talking Board Historical Society in honoring Mrs. Helen Peters Nosworthy in the unveiling of a new monument dedicated to her in Denver's Fairmount Cemetery. Best wishes for a successful celebration. Respectfully, Mayor B. Uh, Hancock, Michael B. Hancock, Mayor. So you may recognize these. These are Ouija boards. This is from 1890. This is from today. A little bit of difference, but still the iconic name Ouija. Now, until recently, we thought that the name Ouija was Ouija. French, we, oui, for yes. Ja, German, for yes. So, yes, yes. And this is what we all thought. If you go online and you look in a dictionary, that's the definition that you're going to get. That is until Robert Murch was searching the archives of the Baltimore Sun, like he often did. And he came upon a series of letters from the actual inventors of the Ouija board, which people have put it together. The, um, the, um, the patentee, the, the man who did the patent, Elijah Bond, and the um, uh, first manufacturer, which was Charles Pennant. And they described an interesting situation where they got together and they named the Ouija board. And what was so fascinating about this was, was they were together with um, Helen Peters, who was Elijah Bond's sister-in-law, and they were doing a session and they wanted to ask the Ouija board, because it hadn't been named yet, what is your name? And the Ouija spelled out O-U-I-J-A. Hmm. And they said, well, what does that mean? And the Ouija replied, good luck. Helen then pulled from her neck a locket. And on that locket was the picture of a woman's face. And at the top of that locket was the name Ouija. Well, Elijah Bond said, well, have you, were you thinking of that? Was that, was that a part of what you were thinking about when you named the board? And he said, and she said, no, definitely not. So the name stuck. 
so we are celebrating her life today. And uh, someone to talk about uh, the, um, the stone itself, the monument, is our talking board director and historian, Brandon Hodge. The Ouija itself began as a remarkable collaboration by an a, a incredible community of, of varied people. It, it started in Ohio among spiritualists who collaborated to try to refine and expedite spirit communications to make things easier in order to communicate. This idea spread to a couple of commercial entities, a uh, uh, gentleman, E.C. Reich, and Charles Kennard in Chestertown, Maryland, who took this idea and, and manufactured some boards sort of for the local scene. One of them, Charles Kennard, thought there was commercial appeal to this item, moved to Baltimore and sparked another collaboration, the beginning of the Kennard Novelty Company, uh, which was later the Ouija Novelty Company. And uh, that included the patentee Elijah Bond, who we've heard from today, uh, Elijah Bond's sister-in-law, Helen Peters Nosworthy, uh, Washington Bowie, uh, their, their attorney. And uh, so uh, another, a, a series of incredible collaborations that resulted in the board that would become the Ouija and persist today. And of course, this fascinates a whole group of us that have another collaboration ourselves, and that's the Talking Board Historical Society. A, a disparate group of uh, rogue, uh, uncanny rogue collectors who were brought together for the purpose of spreading and promoting this history. And that remains the Talking Board Historical Society mission to this day, to preserve the history of the Talking Board, to dispel superstition, and uh, frankly, false history that's been put out there, to, to set the record straight, if you will. And part of setting that record straight is including Helen Peters' enormous contribution to the Ouija, giving it its very name. And so uh, one collaboration begets another. A lot of similarities between this stone and that first collaboration. Ziegler, Ziegler Monument, so we would like to thank, uh, made the first stone and, uh, and made this stone as well. So they are related. They're both Baltimore stones. We felt that was particularly fitting. Uh, the design through our director, Mike Buckner. Where's Mike? Thank you, Mike. Incredible design, as you'll see momentarily. And. Um, just, uh, and our supporters, uh, th those who follow the TVAs, TVHS and uh, follow our history, heed it, and uh, help us preserve it by spreading it. And so that remains our mission. We also uh, want to, again, thank the family. We have a, a, a token here. Uh, we could not have done this uh, without, without Kay and Bob, and if you'll step forward. So this is actually the original plate that was once at this site. Um, you'll notice like Bond's unmarked grave, Helen was also unmarked here. And so we hope she'll, uh, she'll find it fitting that we've, we've now given her some due recognition. Uh, her name is not present here, um, but we, uh, we thank you so much uh, for allowing us this opportunity to properly honor Helen. And, uh I'm just fascinated by this whole place, and, and John, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to be with you today and sharing that information with you. My pleasure, believe me. I love talking about this stuff, especially with people that, you know, are curious about it in the, in the slightest. So. It shows. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and we'd like to find out more about it, too. Maybe some other time we can come back and, oh. uh, you know, get some more information. I'm sure there'll be all new stuff by the next time you come back. <laughs> we could even do a Ouija board session here. <gasps> yes. So cool. Yes. All right, so John, thank you, and yeah, uh, thank you so we much want to much. thank everybody for listening tonight, and good night, and God bless. Good night, good take night. care, everybody stay healthy, and hopefully we'll be back live again next month. Keep your stick in the ice. From goalies to ghosties, 
long leggedy beasties and things that go bump in the night. Deliver us, good Lord.